right in the beginning, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, was asked about uh, the era of big government. Chris Cuomo kept challenging him throughout. Hey, you know, you say you're a democratic socialist and this and that. Aren't you punishing the rich? And uh, Bill Clinton said the era of big government's over. Well, aren't you bringing it back? Let's listen to his answer. And what about the idea that you're bringing back the era of big government and making it bigger than ever? Again, I believe, you know, and Iowa has played a very interesting role in the fight for public education. Mm -hmm. And for 100 plus years, what we have believed public education to be is up to the 12th grade. Free public education up to the 12th grade. Guess what? The world has changed. A college degree today is the equivalent of what a high school degree was 50 years ago. People want to criticize me? Fine. I believe that every kid in this country who has the ability and the desire should be able to get a higher education regardless of the income of his family. And I will pay for that through attacks on Wall Street speculation. They don't criticize the goal. They criticize the method of how you achieve it. Give me a yes or no on that. Is the era of big government back with President Sanders? The era of protecting the middle class and working families is certainly something that I will make happen. I picked this as the, the best line of the debate. Uh, not because it was a zinger, not because there was like what Trump did to Cruz, which unmanned <laughs> the 9-11 line, oh, New York values, how about the guys who uh, lost their lives on New York? It wasn't a line like that. It wasn't, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan's line or Lloyd Benson's, these classic lines. Mm -hmm. But it, it was a line that got to the core of what he's doing here. Look, Chris, you keep framing it like I'm hurting the rich or I'm bringing big government back or I'm bringing socialism. What well, you're not getting is, no, for the first time, we're actually going to look out for the middle class. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and if your kid wants to go to college, uh, it's not only rich kids that get to go now, or if they're not going to be weighed down by debt by the rest of their life and become an indentured servant. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to look out for the middle class. Guilty as charged. So, yeah, you want to charge me with that? I accept it. That's why I'm. <laughs> You know, he didn't say yeah. the part where that's why I'm winning, but that is why he's winning. Cuomo's and I like that he was unapologetic, uh, unapologetic about it. That's why I'm saying it's the best line. It is. It was a great line. And I, Cuomo's framing of that question infuriates me because he makes it seem as though um, in order to look out for the working class or the middle class, you need to really punish those that are, you know, the top earners. It's not punishing those that are the top earners. It's treating the top earners the same way that the middle class has been treated, right? Yeah. We've been paying our fair share of taxes. Why can't the wealthy pay their fair share of taxes? That's not punishing them. That means equal treatment, right? Yeah. But but Cuomo won't frame it that way because he's precisely the type of wealthy individual that's worried about paying his fair share of taxes. Yeah, I mean, were we punishing the rich when we had top marginal tax rates 50 points higher than they are now during the largest expansion of the American or any national economy in the history of the world through the, most of the last century? No. In the 90s when the economy was booming with higher tax rates than they would be under Bush, were we punishing the rich then? No. The rich benefit when the economy does well, and traditionally, historically, the economy does well with higher tax rates. Maybe that doesn't make sense right off the bat to people who've been told every day of their life that being taxed is a bad thing, but that is how it actually works out. And I, that was the worst, like, we want people to ask follow-up questions. And we don't like it when politicians are asked simple questions and don't answer it. Right. But thank God he didn't just answer that with a one-word one, uh, response. Yes or no, is big government back? As if he has no idea that big government isn't a thing. It's a construct that the right created over the past 30 years to mean whatever policies we don't like spending money on is a bad thing and ignore all these things that we're going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars on. And the, the same thing with the taxes. Are you going to raise taxes? Why are you punishing them with the taxes? It's like these terms, big government and taxes. He never went to any school. He never learned about any of these things. It was like you just told a five-year-old, taxes are bad. Now go, talk to people about taxes. Mm -hmm. And then he is, he's obviously a smarter guy than that. But his framing of the questions, what you couldn't, Jeb Bush couldn't have framed it in a more biased way against the left. Let, let, let me conclude on two comments related to that. Uh, one is, if you had asked the Republicans, Hey, you say we need a bigger military, which is what they all say, almost all universally say, except for Rand Paul, uh, to fight ISIS, to do uh, more bombings in Syria, Iraq. Uh, yes or no? Uh, does that mean the era of big government is back? Yeah. Right, does that yes or no? Does that mean you're in favor of big government? The giant military is as big government as it gets. Now that would be weird and unfair, right? Yeah. Because it's a more complicated matter than that. 
for him to turn around to Bernie Sanders and say you're uh, proposing increasing taxes a little bit. That's it, yes or no, big government, big government, yes or no. And the second point is, let me give you a real world example of how this taxes and the quote unquote punishing works. So you get what Bernie Sanders is alluding to. In Michigan, uh, you know, obviously they had the, the poisoning of the water in Flint, partly because they wanted to save uh, one to two million dollars a year, right? Now, the state could have helped Flint, Michigan with that, but instead they had different priorities. So Governor Snyder, who was a venture capitalist before this, ran Michigan like a business. And what did he do? First thing he did was help corporations. And he gave a $1.7 billion annual tax cut to corporations. And in order to make up for that, because they need some money in Michigan, he raised taxes on average uh, people in Michigan by $900 million. So now that's a redistribution of wealth. So they took it from the middle class and they gave it to the top corporations in Michigan. So no one ever asked Rick Snyder, hey, why did you decide to punish the middle class? Mm -hmm. They always are corporate tax, tax cuts are great. That's it. But how about the tax increases to the middle class? And the fact that you can't then have enough infrastructure to not poison your water, yeah. right? How, how come you decide to punish the people of Flint, Michigan yeah. by doing that? Nobody ever frames it that way, but you go into a debate and Chris Cuomo said literally four times, why are you punishing yeah. the rich by raising taxes on them to Bernie Sanders? Or, or come at him with, okay, so we got all this poison water in Flint, are you happy that the era of small government is back in power? Yeah. Because that is what it actually means when you don't spend money on things like safety regulations and, th and taking care of infrastructure and things of that sort.